People depend on rice for food and employment. These people are the poorest of the poor. They earn less than a dollar a day. Rice is life for millions of the world's poor. Have you ever wondered how people grow rice? By 2025, the world will have 3.9 billion rice consumers, and farmers will have to produce more rice using vital resources, land and water, that are becoming scarcer and scarcer. With climate change already damaging the planet at an alarming pace, can poor farmers continue to feed the world with rice, sustainably and safely? Scientists at the International Rice Research Institute, or ERI, think they can. For more than 40 years, ERI and its partners have used high-quality science to develop new technologies to help the world's rice growers. By introducing modern science and farming technologies to the rice fields of Asia, ERI and its partners around the world are helping farmers produce more rice. ERI freely shares, with its partners around the world, improved varieties and better crop management and post-harvest techniques to reduce losses. However, rice prices skyrocketed in early 2008. Many factors brought about this rice crisis. Population growth is outstripping production. We are consuming more than we can produce. Rapid economic growth in large countries has increased demand for cereals for both consumption and livestock production. Demand is higher from countries in Africa and the Middle East, where rice is becoming increasingly popular. Public investment in agricultural research, development, and infrastructure has declined. Productive rice land is being converted for housing and industrial development. The increase in oil prices has made farming inputs more expensive. Natural disasters, flooding, drought, and typhoons have been catastrophic. Global temperatures are rising. And reoccurring pest outbreaks have made it much harder to produce more rice. But there is still hope and there are solutions. Rapid advances in science and technology present exciting possibilities that could revolutionize rice farming. ERI and its partners are now working to ensure that rice crops can adapt to rising temperature, flooding, salinization, and drought, and to reduce rice farming's impact on the environment by helping farmers optimize fertilizer and pesticide use, and also reduce greenhouse gas emissions from rice fields. In the coming years, ERI and its partners will, through precision breeding, create new varieties that have higher yield potential and excellent grain quality, and can better withstand stresses such as diseases, insects, flooding, drought, heat, and salinity. Create varieties that are more nutritious, such as golden rice. Accelerate the introduction and adoption of existing higher yielding rice varieties. Deliver better soil, water, and crop management technologies to help farmers exploit existing yield gaps so they can have better income and consumers can have better access to affordable rice. Continue to design crop management systems that improve rice farming's profitability and reduce drudgery while protecting the environment. And accelerate the delivery of new post-harvest technologies for drying, milling, and storage to reduce losses, which are often around 15%. Today, ERI and its partners have new tools at their fingertips that help accelerate research on the world's thousands of rice varieties stored in ERI's International Rice Gene Bank so scientists can tap into the vast reservoir of knowledge they contain. They are developing a new generation of rice scientists and professional extension workers for both the public and private sector, and they are using modern tools to manage information. Scientists must also work on new frontiers such as developing rice with more efficient photosynthesis, 
known as C4 rice, that will produce higher yields with increased use efficiency of water and nitrogen fertilizer. This will take many years of hard work, and investments in this must start now. But Erie cannot do this alone. In the near term, urgent actions from national governments, international agencies, the private sector, and private philanthropists are needed. These would provide better support for rapidly exploiting technological opportunities for increasing rice yields and policy reforms to improve poor people's food supply. New public-private sector partnerships must be designed for creating new knowledge and bringing new seeds and new management technologies faster to millions of rice farmers in Asia and Africa. Sustainable rice production can be revitalized, but there are no silver bullets. The world community must invest now and for a long time to come.